Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro show. My name is Ferris Savetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro. And today we have a special guest joining us via video call, Lizzie Smith, 2016 Paralympian, training for Tokyo 2021. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Sweet. Thanks for taking the time to, to join me. It's a pretty chaotic time in the world right now. We're, we're doing this over video call. Normally we do these like in person, but for, for those of us who, who maybe are not familiar with your story, then tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so I'm a Paralympic athlete. So for those of you who don't know much about the Paralympics, it's in classifications from S1 to S14. And S1 and through 10 is through varying dis physical disabilities. So I'm in S9. So I have a limb difference where it's my uh, left arm. Um, I competed in 2016 at the Paralympic Games. I got a silver in the 4x100 freestyle relay and a bronze in the 4x100, yeah, the medley relay. Mm -hmm. um, and a fourth place finish, 100 fly. Nice. And uh, you're, being, you're being modest. I know you have like six, is it six world championship medals? I, I do really love competing at world championships. Yeah, the last one in 2019 was my best meet to date where I got two silvers, two bronze. Cool. So, you know, the first thing that a lot of people might be thinking is, okay, 2020 Olympics is not, is not happening. News just came out like literally days ago. How are you adapting to that news? And, um, cause a lot of people they, maybe they're not training for like an Olympic level event, but their, you know, state championships was canceled. Their sectionals, nationals, whatever it was. So how have you kind of taken that news and, and refocusing? You know, two weeks ago, I would have been completely devastated. I thought, like, there's no way that that could happen. I like a lot of people that no way NCAAs would get canceled. Mm -hmm. But now after everything's unfolding, this time is a blessing in taking care of our bodies and our neighbors and our grandparents. That's the number one priority. I think looking at it that way helps a lot. And it helps looking at, like, this isn't being done to me. This is, this is my way of contributing. Totally. I think that's a really positive way to look at it. I mean, this is an opportunity to keep people safe and safety and health comes first. Um, what, how do you like refocus, I guess, your, from a training perspective, knowing that you don't have this, the dates that you had planned and now you have to kind of recalibrate? So much of being a Paralympic athlete is adapting, adapting to what our bodies can do. And now it's just it's adapting to a timeline. And after 2016, I took a year and a half off and then I got back in the water and within two months I was going best times. So I'm kind of looking back at that time knowing that I, I can do this again. It's unplanned downtime, but six weeks, months, however long, I know I'm so hungry that I'll be able to come back going better times and it'll be a good reset. And it really does make you appreciate um, Something I was starting to take for granted, uh, like the early morning practices, or now I, I would do anything to jump in a pool at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's one element that a lot of people are going to be maybe more hungry coming back into training uh, a normal routine, whenever that may be. In the meantime, what are some things that you're doing to stay active? I saw on Instagram something about running, and then it's like you doubled your running distance. Like, how are you staying active? So I started running. Um, I have heard from other swimmers that it's not the most favorite activity. <laughs> I struggle so much with running. The first day I got a mile in and I threw a hissy fit. I sat down on the track and it's like, no, it's not a pool. I don't want to do it. And then the rest of the night was kind of a super bummer night. And then the next time I went to run, I was able to get two miles in, but it's, it's good for my body and I get the same feeling afterwards that I do from a practice when I'm like, okay, glad I did it. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I've been doing for like my joy exercise is I've been dancing in the living room. I just pull up a 30, 40 minute YouTube tutorial and just get my, my body moving that way. Dancing. Okay. Tell us a little bit more. What, what does this look like? What's um, like, what kind of dancing? Uh, okay. So I've been, trying to learn belly dancing. Oh, I have this Sakira obsession and I'm convinced that it's going to help my butterfly. Okay. Freeing up my hips. 
Yeah, totally. So like, how often are you doing this? Uh, it's the first thing I do in the morning. I make my coffee and then I start dancing because otherwise I just sit on the couch and the day gets away from me. So I'm learning that that's the first thing that I have to do. Mm. So this is, I was reading um, some articles about you. I saw there's a quote by the director of U.S. Paralympic Swimming. She said, um, she's just a free spirit. She's unique. Wouldn't say that about everyone. So I think the free <laughs> spirit and belly dancing, maybe like, tell us a little bit more. Like, why do you think maybe she would describe you as like free spirit? Um, I definitely have a rep for searching for um, different ways to approach things. I need to have my mind engaged in what I'm doing. And I, I'm super curious for like, why is my body moving this way? Why am I trying to cut through the water this way? Um, I've noticed that's how I get the most out of what I'm doing. Or if I'm just swimming, I just a 400 of just moving my arms. I'm not engaged. I'm not going fast. So if I'm looking at it from a different angle, I do it a lot better. Mm -hmm. What are you doing anything besides belly dancing and running to, to stay active? I have some free weights in the corner and that's like just keeping everything toned um, and some abs stuff, but the running and the abs, that's the like, all right, let's just keep up the grind that I have been going on. But I think it's really important for it, not just me, but a lot of swimmers is to find something new and find something that you get excited about every day. Because right now it's so easy to kind of get a little depressed because it feels like so many things just are being taken away or just canceled. But there's that thing that you look forward to when you wake up. I think that's really important to find right now. Cool. Um, if we were to go a little bit more specific about some of those core exercises that uh, you alluded to, what, what are some of the favorite ones that you have? So there's this exercise that I was starting to get better at at home while I was training is dragonflies. So I have my prosthetic arm on and I hook it to usually like a, a bar or a stand. And then as I try to keep my whole body, we'll pretend this is my body. So mm -hmm. bring everything up down at the same time. It's super hard and I'm really not good at it, but it's my thing that I look forward to getting better each time I practice it. Mm -hmm. And how often are you doing those um, like free weight core stuff? I try to do a little bit every day. Mm -hmm. And so there'll be every other day I'll do a harder one, but I'll mix it in with a run. And then on the days in between, I'll do like a lighter, like a 15 minute. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, from now until I guess 2021, how do you see that evolving? Because, you know, we're not sure how long this uh, like lockdown is going to take place. So, you know, do you see yourself adapting your routine over the next couple of weeks? And then maybe when the pools open up, do you want to incorporate, like keep the belly dancing or will that go away? I think keeping the belly dancing will be pretty important. And I'm actually, I'm getting really excited about finding a class once we're allowed in groups again. Mm -hmm. But I think that that will probably be game changing. I know last time when I took time off, I was finding new exercises that I carried in with me and that helped me get a lot faster. Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of adaptive CrossFit and then when I got back into training, I was taking those movements with me. Nice. You mentioned after taking such a long break after the 2016 games, um, and then you came back and you were like going faster. Uh, so I guess that's like really motivating to hear for people who are watching. They're like, oh, there's hope that I'm not going to get slower. So I guess if, if some people are in that mindset of I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get so slow, like I can't afford to take off two months or three months. What would you tell someone who has that mindset right now? Oh, I would say you absolutely will because you know, us swimmers, I think we're so used to grinding. We're putting in tons and tons of work and that step back, it gives our mind more freedom to find other ways that we would approach this or to even just reset our technique and to come back and just perfect it and fix those little quirks that we've been doing wrong that we had no idea because it was so ingrained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I have some notes that outside of the pool, you're interested in a lot of other things like, um, like traveling and, and different coffee shops. I read this in your USA bio. Uh, tell us about life outside of swimming. What's that like? Uh, so I, like the high performance director said, definitely free spirit. Uh, my passion outside of swimming is design. Hmm. I love 
graphic design and interior design. And right now I'm studying web development. So I spend a lot of time at coffee shops, um, just diving into my computer. And then I found that at coffee shops, I really appreciate just the design of a coffee shop and the people that each one brings in. Mm -hmm. So I like explain those. What would you like to do post uh, swimming career? Um, so I started coaching uh, as a way to keep me around the pool at first when I was getting back into it. And I found that I've really enjoyed, enjoyed seeing the sport from that perspective. So I see me always being connected to the water a little bit that way. Um, but I will always go back to design afterwards. And it's been fun helping teammates design their logos or their websites. So I'm hoping that if I keep approaching it through that way, it will open up a career for me one day. Totally. And I think as a, like, as a professional athlete, you're always trying to market yourself and brand yourself. So do you see like what, what part of design can you kind of incorporate into that element? Oh, like I know, I know, I know the importance of like, so you, you work with arena, correct? Yes. So like, I mean, I imagine when you're working with Arena or other companies, you're trying to figure out like, how can we, how, like, how has Arena impacted your, your career? Um, so they're one of my sponsors. So actually a huge support, just having a team behind me that believes in me. And then also um, helps me with the, the gear and the equipment to get me there. And it's been fun sitting in the meetings sometimes and looking over prints. Yeah. So that's a way that I can kind of combine the two worlds, the creative and the athlete. Cause it's that way you have to approach from a different angle. Cause there isn't a clear, like, Oh, an artist and an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, jumping around a little bit, but I know, uh, Ian Crocker, you know, uh, butterfly legend, right. And there's a, uh, there's a connection there and you, and you do the hundred butterfly, correct? Yes. Yeah. We actually have a very similar story. So mm -hmm. for everyone, Ian Crocker is my coach in Austin. And kind of a random happy accident that we ended up connected. I just kind of showed up in Austin, not related to swimming. It was when I did a road trip and I just liked the city. So I decided to stay. I showed up at a master's practice and it was one of Ian Crocker's practices. Then afterwards, he just asked if I was wanting to train for Tokyo again or the next Pampax coming up that summer. Then we ended up getting coffee the following weekend and he was telling me about his hundred butterfly in Beijing. And I was telling him about my hundred butterfly in Rio. We we're like, what? You got fourth by a hundredth of a second too. So it's a crazy heartbreaking thing to share with someone. But, but what is, what is something you've learned from him? Um, like maybe butterfly specific, uh, that a swimmer listening to can, can apply whether it's a skill, drill, anything? Um, probably the biggest thing that Ian has given me is finding a love for the water. And butterfly is, it's like belly dancing. It's such a dance with the water. There's a lot of rhythm to it. Um, so you're connected from here down to your tailbone, doing that movement. And you got to find a way to make it fluid. Mm -hmm. So things in a very like, all right, something I would tell any swimmer doing butterfly that, that helped me instantly is just leading with right here. So I just think like pushing that forward through the water. Mm. Yeah. Like the top of your head. Yeah. And I tell to the younger swimmers all the time. And I know when I was younger swimmer, there's things coaches would say that it's just like goes right through. Mm -hmm. But every time I say it, I'm like, no, it makes so much sense. And so I hope that they're absorbing that because it's really a game changer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, um, a final thing here, I know that you're seventh of eight in the family siblings. Yes. <laughs> what, what is that like? That's like a party. It sounds like <laughs> it's, I know a lot of people, they need like their break from a lot of people, a lot of noise going around. Mm -hmm. I find so much comfort in that. Mm -hmm. And right now it's nice being quarantined away from my family, just the group chats that mm -hmm. everyone's doing crazy things. Yeah. And then I'm one of eight and I thought like, that's a lot. My boyfriend is one of 15. So I like totally got shown up when I'm like, eight's nothing. Eight's so small. Whoa. <laughs> that's uh, those are some big family reunions. <laughs> yes. It's a lot of fun. 
And I depend on those people so much. Mm -hmm. I'm very blessed to have them. Awesome. Awesome. Any other shout outs you want to give uh, to people who have helped you along the way? Um, the club swimmers that I swim with at Western Hills, the WAC swimmers. So I coach the younger kids and I get in and swim with the high schoolers. Uh, and I'm 23 swimming with 16, 17 year olds, but each one of them, they have made me so much better and I miss them a lot right now. Awesome. Cool. And how can we connect with you? What's the best way? Instagram, Twitter, we'll put all the handles uh, in the description. Really Instagram at Lizzie Smith under, wait, what's that under? underscore yeah <laughs> underscore underscore smith nice nice and we'll put all the links in the description and we look forward to following your your journey to tokyo 2021 instead of 2020 and thanks again for taking the time to join us for the ask a swim pro show yeah thank you so much <laughs>